Welcome survivors, Snowby here with another guide for Darkness Falls and today we are looking at what Darkness Falls has to offer when it comes to forging. The perks, the various forges, the differences and where the forging speed in Darkness Falls is slower than the vanilla game and smelting. First up, most people playing Darkness Falls are coming from the vanilla game of Seven Days to Dark. In a nutshell, Darkness Falls has four different forges each a higher upgraded level than the previous one. The vanilla game has only one forge. Then the other glaring difference is that there is no smelting. In the vanilla game you smelt your ore before you can make things. However, in Darkness Falls you don't have to smelt any resources before you can make the final product. If you want forged iron, you just combine the various resources, clay and iron, and make forge iron. To start any form of forging, well, you need to build a forge. This little baby here, which you would recognize from the vanilla game, this is the small forge in Darkness Falls. For the newbies out there, just so that you know, you can actually find a fully working forge at some traders. So be on the lookout for that in the early game, for that could save you some time and resources. To craft the forge in Darkness Falls, you need either to go with the laborer class, and you could select the second level hammer to forge skill. If you are not doing the Laborer class, then you can just choose the Forge Ahead perk. That will give you the ability to start crafting the Forge. The Forge is pretty useless though, with horribly slow crafting times. I honestly look at the Forge as just a stepping stone to making myself enough resources so I can get to the next Forge level as soon as possible. For those in those early levels where you just need to try and get yourself some iron, or make a few basic items like glass jars or nails, it works well. Move off this as soon as you possibly can because it'll save you time and it'll save you resources. Right, once you have enough resources and selected the correct perk, you can move to the big forge, which is simply crafted from a workbench. Now we can finally get to something that can generally do most items in the game. The big forge knocks off some crafting time and allows you to forge steel, among a few other things. It also stands three blocks high, so be aware of this when you are crafting it in your base. All the upgraded forges stand three blocks in height. This is where we can now mention the tools used in the forge. The small forge only uses the anvil and the tool and die set. The anvil allows you to craft various items, like forged iron for example. Then the tool and die sets are items used for things like bullet tips. The tool and die set is found in loot only, so you need to explore and loot POIs, do trader quests and check airdrops. When it comes to searching POIs, especially the working stiff crates will be useful when finding the tool and die set. We have the crucible for making steel items and then the bellows. The bellows makes a significant difference in forging times, so make sure you get that as fast as possible. Now we move on to the third level forge. This is the advanced forge and is crafted with the metal workstation. The advanced forge is the first of the no wood silent forges. So you do not use any wood and there's no fuel needed or required to forge your products. Just add whatever you want and make them. You won't even know it is activated if you don't access it. This forge is now the fastest of the three and it often uses fewer resources to craft various items. The advanced forge is great for mass producing items as it also has nine output slots. So the advanced forge is more efficient, crafts most items that you'll require in the game and it produces virtually zero heat. So it does not make any significant difference to the zombie heat map and is practically screamer safe. As this forge can even produce titanium items, it is often the forge that people will craft for mass manufacturing and is not unusual for some players to make 10 or even up to 20 advanced forges for their crafting needs. Finally, we have the fusion forge. This is the last of the forges, the ultimate option. It also does not require any fuel to power it, however it does not have any speed increase over the advanced forge. So it takes the same time to craft items as the advanced forge. This forge is required when using materials like plutonium, uranium and a number of laser technology items. So you will need this for your advanced technologies. Now, the fusion forge is an end game item. So do not expect to steamroll your playthrough and quickly get one of these in the first week or anytime soon. Some minor spoilers coming up. The normal path to obtaining one is through various quests and the story in Darkness Falls. Of course, some veteran players won't bother with the story and the quests and they'll just seek it out for themselves. 
Once you have found the research lab, you will find a laser workbench in that lab. You will also find a fusion forge in the lab, but you can't take either of them. Both the forge and the laser workbench must be left in the research lab and you must use them in the research lab. So either you take the materials with you and craft a fusion forge in the research lab, or you use materials to craft yourself a laser workbench. Once you've crafted the workbench, you can take that back to your base. Just a tip, in the lab, you can easily find the materials for the laser workbench by salvaging and looting various items in there. And don't forget to bring a laser multi-tool as the laser workbench will require that when you are making another workbench or if you're using it for it to make a fusion forge. One of the complaints that some have brought up concerning the forges in Darkness Falls is that they are slower than the vanilla game. People are frustrated with how slow it takes when forging items. Right, this is my response concerning the slow crafting times. First, let us get one thing out of the way. Doctor's Falls is an overhaul mod for 7 Days to Die, developed by Kane. If Kane wants to have slower forging, then that is up to him. His mod, you play it or not. Second, when comparing Forge versus Forge, Vanilla Forge versus Darkness Falls Forge, we can honestly confirm the Vanilla Forging is faster than the Darkness Falls Forging by a long shot. However, and this is where I come into my third point, when people conclude like that, they are comparing without upgrades. With their testing, they may even just plonk down some forges from the creative menu, not realizing you cannot compare apples with apples in this case. If you are a laborer class in Darkness Falls, you get access to forging and speed upgrades. And if you don't play the laborer class, you can have the additional speed upgrades and apply those. This is how you are supposed to play Darkness Falls, by doing the upgrades, not living in a world without upgrades. So, a fully upgraded forge in the vanilla game will craft 100 forged iron in 17 minutes. I rounded it off by a few seconds. On a small forge in Darkness Falls, with a fully skilled and perked upgraded player, it will take 25 minutes to craft 100 iron. However, it will take 11 minutes to craft 100 forged iron on a big forge and 7 minutes on an advanced and a fusion forge. Even if you are not specking points into the laborer class, there are three upgrade options that you can take and those will make forging slightly faster than in the vanilla game. So I can see that forging is faster in vanilla, but only if you compare it with a Darkness Falls game that no one is actually playing. So get the upgrades as that is how you are supposed to play. And don't be an idiot and complain about the slow speeds. To play Darkness Falls, you need to progress to a big forge. You need to go and move to an advanced forge and you should not be silly enough to be playing without the upgrades. The game gives you enough skill points to go around, so use them. Right, thanks very much for watching. Please drop a like and subscribe if you haven't. And make a comment, please, if you have any other advanced forge or forge information in general that you'd like to let other people know about. And I'll see you in the next one.